Welcome back, Pokemon Trainers. Professor Chaz here. The lab coat's on back order, and first thing I'm going to mention this week is I do have a trio of Pokemon TCG booster packs to open today. We've got the Furious Fist, the Phantom Forces, and a Primal Clash. So as always, I'm going to wait till the end of the video. I'm going to open these up. Code cards are going to go to the viewers. So last week, I did have two packs. I had, what was it, the base set, I believe, and Flash Fire. And I left question of the day, and I got some comments on that. And I did give out the code cards and messages on YouTube. Now my question is, now this isn't the question of the day, but I just want to get some feedback. I don't know how messages really work on YouTube, like if you get a notification, if you have a message or something like that. So what I want to do, just to make sure that the one person gets the code card, I will send it in a direct message on YouTube. But my question is, do you guys get notifications for that? Like, or should I actually comment on the comment that is getting the code, just to let the uh, commenter know that there is a message coming, and if they don't check their uh, inbox regularly, to check it then, that way they'll get the code. So let me know if you think I should do that, because I know, at least for my channel, when I get a comment, it shows me a little notification. So if that is a more visible way to let you know that you won the code card, I can do that. I can easily just leave a comment saying, be sure to check your inbox, you've received a code card. So let me know if you want me to do that, and at the end of the video, as I say, I'm going to open three more packs. I'll give you a question of the day for this video that you can leave a response to. And I will choose three random comments to get one of those code cards from each of those packs I opened up today. Now, there's not too much to mention in the world of news. But I'm going to give you a brief update on the channel for, you know, coming up for this week. Things are a little bit delayed. Now, it's been kind of a busy week for me. And most of my downtime that I've had, I've been preparing for this weekend's festive feud coming up. And I've got a pretty decent team of Pokemon. I can't wait to show them off in the team builder and the battles. But that's coming later in the week. Everything is going to be a little bit delayed, unfortunately. So normally, after today, I would have the TCG online video tomorrow, which is Wednesday. But it's going to be delayed until Thursday. Like Everything's probably going to be pushed back a day. I'll try my best to make sure I get every video done for this week that I normally do. So we'll have like the TCG online, a team builder, the uh, Omega Ruby well, double battles. It'll be the festive feud battles and the Pokemon X singles. So, they will be delayed. I'm hoping to have them in that order. I might actually have to mix it up a little bit depending on my schedule. But look forward to that. We are going to I'm going to do my best to get the TCG online, the Team Builder, Festive Feud and Pokemon X singles I'm trying to get them out. So, if they are delayed by a day, the schedule is going to look like Thursday will be the TCG, Friday will have the Team Builder, Saturday is the Festive Feud battles and then Sunday will be the X singles. Now, I think that's going to work out pretty good, too, because I watch other YouTubers that do online battles. They will have team builders, and then they will have battles with those teams. And the way it works is they will actually record both of those on one day, and then, say, the following day or two days from then, they'll put the team builder up, and then they'll show the battles they had, which makes sense, because I've seen sometimes when they show the team builder, and I'm thinking, people are going to know what to expect, right? Like, you know, you're telling your strategies to your viewers right in that video. They're going to know what to battle. But the clever thing is, of course, they record the battles before that team builder even goes live. So my hope is to record a team builder, upload it on Friday, but I'm going to have the battles starting on Friday because that's when the festive feud officially starts off. So I'm going to try to record some battles on Friday, do a like upload the team builder kind of later in the day on Friday. Not that I expect too many people that watch my videos are, are going to meet me in battle in the festive feud, but you never know. You know, better safe than sorry. So that's the schedule we're looking at so far. Things, like I say, you know, might be shifted around a little bit, but I'm going to do my best to get each one of those videos out, if not on a delayed schedule. So that's what we're looking for in the channel coming up. Now, in the greater world of Pokemon news, they've announced, they've announced, I'm announced, some new updates in the Pokemon TCG Online for December. Now, if you're not subscribed to the Pokemon Trainer Club newsletter, you have until December 9th to sign up for that. And that's where they're going to send out a special newsletter, including a special code to unlock an online booster pack. So, you know, why not sign up? Like, I, I thought I was signed up, but then I saw that notice and I thought, I don't ever get emails. So I went into my account, all you got to do is click the checkbox to opt in for newsletter email things. And you'll get an online code card, or not code card, an online code to unlock an online booster pack. And they say there are special challenges giving cool rewards all throughout the month of December. So I don't know if those are, they're probably not the, the latter challenge, but usually you get the uh, daily challenge saying, knock out X number of Pokemon with your dark type Pokemon. So you'll probably get to see some of those. And I should clear up my older ones so I can actually get those. So I'll look into that coming up too. But anyways, special challenges. And then from December 21st to January 4th, 
the reward of trainer tokens that you get for winning battles is going to be doubled. So it's a little bit of a holiday gift, I think it is. So um, from that time period, do your battles, try to get some victories, and you'll get double the reward tokens, which you can then spend on, you know, uh, avatar costume stuff, more online booster packs. And speaking of avatar stuff, um, nope. First of all, December 25th to January 4th, says you can log in to the uh, Pokemon TCG online, get a passcode for a special bonus. Now, they don't elaborate on what that special bonus is, but you get the word special, get the word bonus, put them together. Who doesn't want that? So we're going to find out what that is together, I suppose. Now, as far as the avatars I mentioned a moment ago, starting on December 8th, they're actually going to include new hats in the trainer club, or the, the, what is it, the trainer builder? I forget what it's called exactly. But... New holiday hats, which you can spend your tokens on, and it shows a, uh, a Santa hat and a Christmas tree hat. I don't know if anything will ever truly replace the Charizard hat that I have both IRL and IG in game. I don't know if that's a abbreviation or acronym people use, but anyways, new hats for uh, holiday season. All right, so the only other thing I'm really going to mention for this week is, like I said, there's not much to mention. The new Pokemon game, Pokemon Picross, has come out. And when I first heard about this, I thought, that's pretty cool, because I played Mario Picross on the Game Boy way, way back. I forget how long ago that came out. But if you don't know what Picross is, it's essentially... Th think of it like pixel art. Do I have an example? Think of it like... I just knocked them all over, but... Squirtle. So this is basically pixel art. It's where you take an in-game sprite or something like that that has, like, you know, the little dots, little blocks, and you have an image that represents something. So, for example, Squirtle. Now, Picross gives you a grid of, you know, a certain number of squares. Some of them are as small as five, what, what is it, five by five? No, I think it was seven by seven was the smallest. But you get a grid of blank squares. And along the top edge, the top edge, along the edge and the top, it shows you a series of numbers. I'm going to put you down, Squirtle. And the number represents how many filled-in blocks are supposed to be in that column or in that row. And using, you know, process of deduction and you know, elimination, things like that. You figure out exactly which blocks to fill in. You can also mark other blocks with an X to indicate that you are not supposed to fill that in. So it's a pretty cool puzzle game, and Mario's Picross back in the day was actually really interesting. I really like puzzle games like that, and they introduced that into the world of Pokemon. Now, what's really neat with this, though, is as you complete each puzzle, and each one is a picture of a Pokemon, that Pokemon you can actually bring with you into the next puzzle, and it gives you a special ability that lets the uh, you know makes the puzzle a little bit easier. You can have possibly you know some of the squares will be revealed. It will show you if uh, those numbers along the uh, edge and the top, if you can fill in like a hole or a like an X to help you figure out the rest of the puzzle. It'll highlight it blue, so you know there's something you can do in that row to possibly lead you into the right direction for the rest of the puzzle. So it's pretty cool, and it's actually a free download on the eShop if you go there. It's a free, you know, free to download, free to play. They do have in-game purchases, because to unlock more things in the game, you get these gems called pick rights. And if you're going to play this game, I'm going to say, hold on to your pick rights, because I've kind of slightly ruined the game temporarily. I spent my pick rights on things earlier of, you know, trying to... You have like an energy bar, basically, which is kind of like in Pokemon Shuffle, the hearts the energy bar determines how much you can play that that day, or for a few hours at least. Once you drain the energy bar, it says you have like an hour timer letting you know when it's going to fill back up again. So you can uh, use the pick rights that you get to refill that energy bar. You can also use the pick rights to unlock other areas. You can unlock more slots in your Pokemon team. And what I actually did, now on occasion you'll get a notice that there is a rare Pokemon in an area. And that happened for me, and it was Manaphy. And I was trying to fill out the puzzle, and every time you fill in one of the blocks in a puzzle, it takes one of your energy points away. And I believe you start at 100 energy, you can build it up to 200 if you spend your pick rights on it. So, as it happened, or just so happens, I was doing the Manaphy puzzle and I kept messing up. You know, I'm not perfect at the puzzle games, but that's what I like about it, it's a challenge. So, I ran out of energy, and they said in the, the current puzzle, if you spend X number of pick rights, you can refill your energy meter. I thought, all right, I've come this far with Manaphy. I'm going to do that because I've almost completed the puzzle. But as it turns out, I didn't have enough pick rights left to unlock the next area because if you spend an increasing number of pick rights each area, you'll get into a new area. And I'm currently waiting to get 80 pick rights, and I've got 70 something right now. So 
every day you can do like a daily challenge which will give you a small number of pick rates. Completing challenges in the puzzles will also get you pick rates as well. Or, as I said, for in-game purchases, you can go to the eShop and spend some of your you know, account funds to get some more pick rates. And I'm trying not to do that. I'm going to wait and see how far the in-game rewards of pick rates can get me. But there is that option. And the pricing isn't too bad, really. You can get, I forget what it was, but you can get 200 pick rates for a dollar something, I think it was. So, and then as you get greater number of pick rights, the overall amount kind of, you know, minimizes. So, I think it was like the next one was 600 pick rights for three, maybe four bucks. I can't remember exactly. But anyway, all that being said, it's a really fun game. And if you like puzzle games, I would definitely say check it out, download it. It is a free download, free to start into. And if you like it, who knows, maybe you want to spend some money and get some pick rights and advance yourself further into the puzzles. So, that is actually everything I'm going to mention for the news update. We're going to now go into the booster packs of the Flash, not Flash Fire, of the Furious Fists, the Phantom Forces, and the Primal Clash. We'll see what I get. I'm hoping for a dive ball, maybe another Swampert. Hoping for good stuff from you guys too. Don't I want don't I don't want to discount you guys. Alright, so let's open these up and I'll give you this week's question of the day for you to answer and we'll go from there. Let's begin. It is time now to open up these three booster packs, starting with this week's question of the day, and that's going to be, since this is the season of giving, what are you looking forward to getting for this holiday season? What kind of a present or you know, anything along those lines? Like, What are you most looking forward to getting? So, let's open up. I'm going to try and slide out the code card first before we see anything else, which is tricky. I like to not even see the first common card in the pack. And is it facing the other way? Okay. So this is the Furious Fist booster pack. That's the code card. And just answer that question of the day. And I didn't mention, but leave the hashtag QOTD in your comments so that I know your response applies to the question of the day, which is, what are you most looking forward to receiving this holiday season? As for what I'm receiving this holiday season, let's see what we get in the pack. So there's a Minin, Torchic, Clefairy, a Shroomish, a Pancham. Uncommon start with a Fighting Stadium. A, another Pancham, the other one that can evolve if there's a Dark type on your bench. A Tool Retriever. Now it's actually pretty interesting, I haven't really mentioned this I think, but if you are using EX Pokemon and your opponent attaches any of the Team Flare Hyper Gear to it, you can actually use the Tool Retriever to get rid of it. Now it actually says here, choose up to two Pokemon Tool Cards attached to your Pokemon and put them into your hand. The, hyper, the Team Flare Hyper Gear states that any time the tool is removed from a Pokemon, it goes to its owner's discard pile. So that text overrides this text, but this is a way to get rid of those Hyper Gear off of your EXs. The Reverse Foil is a drowsy, pretty fancy looking, and the rare card of the Furious Fist Pack shall be a Dragonite EX! Pretty cool! I think I've had one of these before, and I traded it to my nephew, but now I have another one, or one, I guess, to replace in my collection. You are going to stand back here, buddy. And if you need to, you can bust in. I should probably mention it. So yeah, bust in, the ability is unfocused, but it says, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may move any number of basic energy cards attached to your Pokemon to this Pokemon. If you do, switch this Pokemon with your active Pokemon. So it can come in, set up immediately, and fly right in and start doing Jet Sonic for two grass and a lightning. It does 80+. plus. And you may discard an energy attached to this Pokemon. If you do, this attack does 40 more damage. So it'll be a pretty good sudden strike attack. And if you attach a Float Stone from the new Breakthrough expansion, you can retreat it for free. Whereas normally you have to lose three energy cards or play a Switch card to put it to the bench. So Dragonite EX, you're going to sit back there. Hopefully whoever gets that code card will have just as much luck in the online booster pack as I had with this. So we're going to open up the Phantom Forces. And not that you probably need a reminder, but I will just remind you, make sure you answer a question of the day. Let me know what you're looking forward to receiving this holiday season. All right, so the code card for this one is off to the side. And let's see which 10 physical cards I happen to get. So starting again with the commons. I'm going to start with a Helioptile, a Finneon, Poochiena, Swaddle, and Chansey. The uncommon start with a Battle Compressor, very useful for Night March. A Shauna, very useful for getting different cards. 
Professor Sycamore, also useful for getting different cards, but you discard your hand. Reverse Foil card shall be a Gumi, who can heal itself for 10 damage and tackle for a whopping 20. And I don't think it's focused. But the rare card of the Phantom Forces pack is going to be a Haunchcrow. Hypnoblast does 20 damage and puts the opponent's Pokemon to sleep. And Nightmare Mambo does 60, plus, if the opponent's active Pokemon is asleep, 60 more. This actually works pretty well with the Malamar EX that came out in this set. Because Malamar EX says anytime you attach an energy from your hand to it, you may put your opponent's Pokemon to sleep. Honchkrow can then do its Nightmare Mambo for double damage. Alright, so the final pack. This is the one I have the high hopes for. If I were to answer my own question of the day, it would be, I would like to receive a Dive Ball this holiday season. More specifically today. But we'll see what fate has in store for me. So there's the code card. And once again, leave your response to the question of the day, and you have a chance to win one of these three online TCG code cards. Okay, come on. Is the luck with me this time? I haven't pulled a dive ball in forever. Skitty. Horsey. Spinda. Nose Pass. And Trap Inch. Okay, the uncommons begin. Here's where the trainers come into play. We have a Ride On. We have a Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick. We have a weakness policy, useful for my Onyx in the video game, pretty decent in the card game as well. It uh, gets rid of the weakness of the Pokemon that it's attached to. Okay, last chance for a dive ball. Reverse foil card. Can you be a fancy dive ball, please? Well, my neck trick, that's pretty fancy looking. It's got lightning turn. It's almost like Volt Switch from the video game. 30 damage, and you switch this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon. And then electric shock, kind of a downside. 70 damage, discard all lightning energy attached to this Pokemon, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. This actually wouldn't be bad, though, with the new Magnezone, or, yeah, Magnezone from Breakthrough. Magnezone, so, like, the downside to this, you lose all lightning energy, and you need at least two to be able to use this, and it always causes paralysis. Now, the new Magnezone can let you attach at least two lightning energy per turn back to Manectric, so you can constantly paralyze your opponent's active Pokemon. I might want to put that into an online deck, actually. All right, rare card of the Primal Clash set. Final card of the week is Azumarill. Bubble Beam does 30, and flip a coin if heads. Your opponent's active Pokemon is paralyzed. Superpower does 60. You may do 30 more damage. If you do, it does 30 to itself. So what I just said, too, this uh, a lot of attacks will paralyze the opponent's Pokemon, but you have to coin flip or discard or something like that. So discarding energy is a good way to... Make sure that Manectric isn't overpowered, because it's going to take, normally, two turns to repower that Electric Shock. But if you include Magnezone with it, you're going to be able to power it up every turn. Constant paralysis, no coin flip. It's pretty fancy. So those are the booster packs for the week. Again, question of the week. Question of the day, sorry. What are you looking forward to receiving most this holiday season? Leave your answer down below in a comment. Use hashtag QOTD, so I know it's applying to the question. And as of Sunday, I will... Randomly take three commenters who have used the hashtag to receive one of these code cards. It's going to be random draw as well, just so you know. So that is this week's news update video. Stay tuned starting on Thursday this week. I'll do my best to get the TCG online video up for you. If not, I'm going to switch it around. I might go for video game footage for that day. We'll see how it plays out. All right, thank you for checking out this video this week, everybody. And say bye to Dragonite EX. Bye. All right, catch you next time.